Everybody, welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. We have reached episode 654. It's December 1st, 2021. I'm Sebastian Beek. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Brett Van Spruenberg. And you can subscribe to be alerted, as I was earlier this evening, to when we go live. For live events like this podcast recording session, pcper.com slash subscribe. You can become a patron of PCPer. Support the site. Before we move on to the burger update, did you have anything you wanted to share with us, Brett? There was something about unboxing. I, I did. And there was like a challenge that the next time I went to uh, Micro Center, I was supposed to like unbox whatever it is that I bought. So I bought one of these. Don't Please don't make fun of me. Okay. Well, so why would it anybody is. make fun of you for buying a Ryzen processor? Well, because they're kind of nearing a, a you know a refresh at this time, and as you can see, the yeah. the uh, seal is unbroken. Oh, it's the fifty eight hundred X. Okay, it is. It is because I wanted something. Is unbroken. I wanted something that was that was um, sporty, uh, yet hot at the same time. Because I wanted to be able. I wanted a challenge to cool it. So oh, it'll uh, be a challenge you, to cool it. Yeah, it's so not that's, that that's the hot. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I've. Uh, I've I've split the tape now, and we can watch me un, uh, ineptly, you know, well, remove this from the packaging. Does that one come? Is, with is it hotter than a seventy seven hundred K? Yeah, I think so. No. Yes. Uh, this one. Well, does not come that, with no, the, not necessarily. So, My evidence is right here. Some of this unboxing <laughs> was. I had to buy a heater for this room screen. after the Threadripper moved out. Well, Threadripper is another X doesn't keep me warm. Game. And hey, for those of you, who oh, you bent a pin that, already. Yeah, my Who's, God! I know. That's Make sure no, there are no bent pens inside the packaging, for, Brett. For those of you who've never seen a the backside of an AMD CPU, that's yeah, a, that's, at extremely low resolution. Yeah, I know. I don't know what happened to my res. It just kind of just went. There, I don't know. It just snapped back. I don't know. It looks like about weird. 480p at best. <sighs> I'm sorry about that. I don't know what's going okay. on. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, you have gonna, a 5800X. Welcome to the club. I'm gonna lift the lid and, and oh, no. you're gonna it something right bad now. is gonna happen. I know. If you're going to drop it. Smell that new processor. So it's not an Intel processor, Brett. Those have see those things on the bottom. Those are pins. Yeah, those are They're pins. not on the motherboard. Yeah. So They'll hurt your gums if you bite them. Okay. I will not. How, many, how many pins? Eleven seventy-seven. Thirteen seventy-seven. I can't remember. Um, this is surprising. By the way, this is of course surprisingly heavy. Just want to let you know. Yeah. It's it's it's, yeah. it's hefty. There are a lot of transistors. Yeah, fifteen hundred X. Heft. I uh, I wanted to give uh, a couple of the latest uh, AIOs that I uh, have to review a, uh, a bit of, more of a challenge. I mean, we've got the ninety. I have a ninety nine hundred K. I have the Kentucky Shroud edition, actually. Yeah, I know. You, you gave me that one. Um, so I've got that one, but this one seems a little bit more on point. And I had a two thousand at a Zen two series one, so I didn't have a you know a later model Ryzen one. This this one's you know obviously a little bit better. So there, I unboxed it. Uh, Yay. And, and the uh, hopefully the Discord crew is happy with that. Now let's move on to something that on the surface is normal. We always have a burger update, almost always. But it's usually from Laramie, Wyoming. Now, if you go a little further north, you'll reach Canada. It's a country that's above us. And for some reason, we're not all incorporated yet. I don't know what the holdup is. America's hat. Yes. Uh, can you please explain what we're seeing here? Well, that's artistic. Apparently. That is a deconstructed, gluten-free cheeseburger. If you're listening to the audio, we're looking at a bowl. Yeah, with some cucumbers and tomatoes and spinach and jalapenos okay. and red onion and some president uh, aged, uh, what was that again? Uh, aged brie. Where with is a little the uh, balsamic vinegar. Well, that is below because it got oh, yeah, deconstructed scrolling. to the point where it actually <laughs> formed back together into a steak. <laughs> Completely 100% deconstructed and gluten free. How is this deconstructed if the meat is still on the bone? I'm, I'm See, it's been. Confused. <laughs> because when you deconstruct a burger, you take it apart and put it into separate little bowls. Well, this one is so deconstructed, it's actually reformed back pre grinding. Hmm. Ah. Qualcomm, you may have heard of them. They power a lot of phones, other than the ones that have uh, Exynos processors from Samsung and a couple others. I mean, there's some other stuff out there. We don't really there's, talk about Huawei phones one anymore. One or in this two country. other ones. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but they have 
announced they had a tech day yesterday, or a semi tech day. And today. VR. Oh, yeah. This was day yeah. two oh, yeah. today. And on today. And we have the, I don't really understand this naming convention, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Not just Snapdragon 8, it's 8 Gen 1. So clearly they're planning a Gen 2 already. But ARM V9. You have Cortex mm -hmm. X2. Just one core, though. This is the interesting thing about this configuration. You've got four performance cores and four efficiency cores, but one of the performance cores is like the golden core, which is a 3 gigahertz isn't, core. Isn't the MediaTek latest that they announced essentially identical to that i don't think they use the exact same specs but uh they're yeah i think it's one one x2 and three seven tens and four five tens or something like that Yeah, something like that sorry go ahead oh, that's fine I'm, I'm on their site looking here there was a, a diagram of the the core breakdown somewhere but i'm more interested in i guess the gpu performance Adreno's always been really fast. I don't know what advancements have been made there. They were a little light on technical details yesterday. They said essentially it'll perform, provide double the frame rates at the exact same uh, battery consumption. Hmm. Or the same performance at half the battery consumption, but... That's, that's very Apple-like of them in the way that they quoted that yeah. spec. I think this is When so anyone says, oh, it doubles everything, I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure it does, yeah. Okay. The, there's been some noise too. I don't. Of course, they're not talking about it right here. But this is like it's all AI. Everything is AI. They're calling it the. Uh, they have the artificial intelligence engine, which encompasses the AI E GPU, always on AI, and apparently yes. there's an always on camera. In addition, to watch for shoulder surfers. Apparently, yeah. If you thought it was bad that your phones listen to you all the time. Under the pretext of waiting gonna for watch you. some cue yeah. to, like, hey, Siri or hey, Google. Well, now they're going to watch you, too. Yeah. Hmm. So, enjoy that. I feel like everybody's just kind of introducing new features and making the most of the ongoing ship shortage. There's not going to be some bold, revolutionary new product, or it wouldn't be available for a year anyway. No. Qualcomm likes to sometimes design their own stuff, right? So for years, they, they, they took the kind of basic ARM designs and then made them faster. They, they, they enhanced them different ways architecturally. Um, but with ARM V9 being just, you know, pretty recently released, it's going to be a process for them to be able to integrate all those new extra features and whatnot into a slightly different part uh, that, that hopefully will, you know, outperform the competitors. So at this time, they're just using, you know, the basic stuff that, that ARM has. And, and, you know, I kind of say basic uh, because it's just these, you know, these designs that ARM has already synthesized and they know they work. And, and uh, so it's easier for Qualcomm to just do that for this first generation and be able to keep up with the Joneses uh, when it comes to uh, supporting uh, ARM V9. Because ARM V8 has been out for over 10 years now, which is really kind of <laughs> kind of blows your mind but it's it is so it was high time for a new arm architecture to uh, to embrace some 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 new technologies and whatnot and and uh, yeah this is going to be their first step and it'll be interesting to see when they come out with more custom type design parts and uh, how that's going to stack up against the industry and you'll have more players too because Microsoft and uh, Amazon are both got their fingers wiggling in there. So they're interested yeah, in seeing what new will be able to come out. I yeah, yeah. just released a new uh, server CPU this week, actually. We yeah. just talked about it anyways. And Microsoft is sort of breaking up with Qualcomm mm -hmm. because, I mean, the, the surfaces that were powered by uh, ARM were not well-received, shall we say? Especially with a pro oh. moniker at the very end of it. Don't, and we will talk about that. That's on the list. Don't do your story... Yeah, don't do your right, well, okay. quickly. Let's let's shift then to some very good news for AMD fans. You know how you buy even a premium AMD motherboard or laptop, and it still has an Intel Wi-Fi chip on it, like an AX two hundred. Well, AMD. This was back uh, 
in last week or so. They announced that they're working with MediaTek. There's this collaboration to produce the AMZ RZ600 series, which are Wi-Fi 6E chips. So they're going to have their own solution. So I say the era of Intel Wi-Fi 6 equipped AMD ports coming to an end? And it's, it's using the Phylogic, Phylogic 330P chipset, which is an existing thing, but this is a new partnership with AMD. So I would hope that this means that AMD motherboards going forward will have an AMD chipset, AMD, you know, USB solution, AMD Wi-Fi solution on board. Well, it's, it's got good stats there. It's two by two, which is good. Two by two, six, six dual e. band. Bluetooth low energy built in up to uh, 5.2 rev. Mm-hmm. Very Intel-like. It has it checks all the boxes. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's not going to outperform Intel, I don't think, but it sounds pretty much the same. Where you have, here is the little breakdown. Of, there's a table here if you're listening. It just shows there's a couple different modules. One of them has the, the wider 160 megahertz. One is 80. So they're both two by two, 6E. Available in a couple different uh, package types. If you get the uh, RZ616, it's going to be the higher end module. Sounds good. Maybe we should wait. Now we need an audio codec. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) We should wait for this to come out on ITX board, and then we'll go get one to refresh your ITX builds. I've shown it on the podcast before, but I have a a couple of audio solutions from AMD from back in the day. The Interwave. Yeah. Back in like 95, 96, AMD wanted to get into the sound card business. Let's break here for a word from our first podcast sponsor. Minimize the effort, maximize your productivity with Text Expander. Text Expander helps you work faster and smarter so that you can focus your time on the most important work you've got. Use Text Expander for faster results in three easy steps. One, create. Make snippets of text for support responses, sales outreach, or even common emails, then save them in Text Expander. Two, trigger. Just type a few characters and watch the snippet automatically expand your text. Now you can fill in the blank on forms or perform far more complex functionalities to customize your messaging. And three, share. Your whole team can take advantage of your saved snippets, making them more consistent, accurate, and current by giving them the right words for every situation. Use Text Expander's powerful shortcuts and abbreviations to streamline and speed up everything you type. Now that's increasing productivity. Text Expander's available on Mac, Windows, Chrome, iPhone, and iPad. Show listeners get 20% off their first year. So visit TextExpander.com slash podcast to learn more. That's TextExpander.com slash podcast. Did you know that Microsoft and Qualcomm have been going out for a while? In fact, they had an exclusive relationship. Yeah. I didn't even know this. Like I'm it's up on the, the gossip. Wait a minute, what? You haven't yeah. noticed the, I didn't all the surface arm? I, 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 were thought, all I didn't know Qualcomm? they were exclusive. I knew that they were oh, yeah. exclusive. But <laughs> they were exclusively awful. They've been exclusive. And that's why you couldn't get Windows on ARM on anything else. Apparently that's coming to an end. Mm-hmm. Soon. Well, you know, Microsoft soon. <laughs> they revealed years? the SQ1 and the SQ2 like hey we, we actually have these processors that are actually probably real silicon and we're probably going to be putting in them sometime soon but part of the reason for that was that they did actually have a legally binding contract which is coming up for renewal and from the looks of it uh, Microsoft isn't that interested in doing it and honestly if I was Qualcomm I'd want my product out of their windows on arm devices as quickly as i could so it's going to be interesting to see how this works out and how long it's going to take because the surface has gone from some decent products and a bunch of really awful ones to what i'd almost describe as a solid machine it's often compatible with microsoft software now so that's a big thing and you know actually moving to hardware that's on the brand new ARM design and built in house, you know, that does actually make surface seem like it's going to be a little more reasonable to be using for anything other than, you know, what the old netbook used to be. So at the same time, you got to wonder if maybe part of this is that, uh, you know, Nvidia is still at this point going to be able to take over ARM. Like there are still court cases going, there will be more, but 
you know, as it stands right now, if you're planning for the long time, you're going to realize that if you're dealing with ARM, you're going to be dealing directly with NVIDIA. So do you want to do that directly or do you want to do it through a second party and then on to them? Especially when you might be, you know, trying to grow your stuff. So at the same time, you've got, uh, as we mentioned, Amazon uh, working on their own sort of stuff. And so Qualcomm may just well say, you know what, we're going to focus a lot more in depth on what we're doing. And we're going to try and fix some of the stuff that, uh, like, if you follow Charlie Demergen, came out during these uh, <laughs> the, the past two days, that maybe there, <laughs> there is some work they could be doing in-house to make things a little bit better. So maybe this will help them focus. And it'll be interesting to see how well Microsoft really can implement their own silicon in a product. Oh, come on, man. This Who could go one that? of two you know- ways. You know where the best PC Windows laptops are going to be after this evaporates. After this, it's it's going to be it's going to be running Windows on the on uh, M1. Yeah, M1 I knew and you M1 were going to say that. Pluses, uh, yeah, I had to. <laughs> hey, there's something. But to it's be fair. Said. You uh, could hey, legally that, that do was this. Actually, true. Yeah, yeah. there's and something I, to be said for that because it's a it's it, going to be one of the premier workstation laptops. Unfortunately, look at it. It's just, it, it honestly you can get one of these things that has 64 gigs of unified memory and GPU workloads. That's Pretty an unbelievable amount of RAM. Yeah. If you can, if it runs, like I don't know how hot it runs. If you can run it efficiently, and a very, very fast RAM, very, because it's so closely yeah. associated in the SOC. Four hundred mm-hmm. gigs per second of bandwidth is a lot. Yeah. I'm excited for Windows on ARM to be on as many platforms as possible, because maybe developer support will improve to the point where we can just forget about this whole x86 divide. And thanks, Steve Ballmer. Anything and everything <laughs> will run on ARM because let's face it, ARM is the future. It's been the future for a long time, and all it needs is the adoption. Because I mean, you can—it's going to get to the point where we have enough compute horsepower to emulate whenever we need to for x86. Yeah, you're already starting to see that in the way that Apple's previous software pretty well runs on their uh, M1. Yeah, I remember uh, Jim talking about that. He was like, it's yeah. kind of scary how well it works, that it's running yeah. stuff at the same speed in emulation. Or yeah, or or better in some cases. Yeah, that was the weirdest odd. part is that it ran it. But that was yeah. mm. say much for Intel on Mac OS if it was running better in emulation. But. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Uh, any more on that? Yeah, risk for more? life. Just letting you know. Risk for life. Risk for life. Josh, I thought yeah. maybe you would jump in and, and, <laughs> and say, no, no, Intel still got a, a trick or two up their sleeve, or AMD's, they're going to pull this off. And, uh, where's uh, Power 9 guy when you need him? Yeah. He, for, you know, it's, uh, oh, wow, that guy. That was, I got emails. <laughs> as a as a blast from the past, you know. And, and they, I think he emailed me way early when uh, um, the Sony... Uh, one that had the spews on it. Which one was that? PS3. And uh, they integrated a, yeah. an NVIDIA GeForce. And he's like, "So when's 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 NVIDIA just gonna drop x86 and go totally with Sony because they're drinking from the fire hose of of power with spews?" And it's like, dude, no, no. But you can't convince people like that. You know, it's really funny. You know, it, you got me thinking back. You said netbooks and. I remember at the height of netbooks was when we started doing actually video with PC per, you know, the 2010 to 2012 area. And I looked up and my Logitech C920 that I'm still using today was released in 2012. And we got them when they were brand new. I, I had no idea that my webcam is this ancient. And it still looks okay. I mean, my color is not great, but yeah, you know, that's because I'm a pasty white guy. Yeah, I'm still using the C- same C920, but you can really see the blues in my eyes. They are true. nice. Are you are you using a blue background to ex- accentuate the blue in your eyes? No, no, no. Just he's like been that. on the spice. Mm, okay, that makes sense. Nice. Who could ever forget this experience? 
you know, helping yeah. helping family members with a what was it? A ten twenty four by six hundred resolution screen. It wasn't seven sixty eight. It was no six forty. No, no, it was not. It was chopped. And it wasn't even well, chopped mean, like a normal screen oh, resolution. These hardware books. inside of it couldn't handle the full resolution. No. Right. Okay. <laughs> and well into the Windows Seven era, they were shipping with Windows XP. Later, they were shipping with Windows Seven Basic. At least the ones I was selling. We sold a lot of HP, whatever HP's netbook was called. Yeah, and that was all Adams and all uh, AMD Jaguar based mm. yep. SOCs. Those things were, AMDs did okay, but they're always just so cut down on every other part. Super slow hard drives, small, tiny amounts of RAM. Yeah, they. It's glad I'm glad that netbooks went by the wayside. That whole cramped experience. Wait, you still have the box for your C920? No, I bought a backup. <laughs> a couple oh. years back, I actually asked for one for Christmas because, you know, this is a ridiculously solid camera. But it this was when it was doing the weird things where suddenly my screen would go out of focus and my bit rate would go to hell. And I'm like, okay, maybe it's a camera. But it fixed itself, so I never had to use it. But if it ever dies... You've got it. Now, you know the Kingston SSDs, if you've shopped around for SSDs in the last few years, KC2000, and there was another one, maybe 2100. Those were TLC Gen 3 drives. They have a KC3000 now. It's a Gen 4 drive. They've joined the PCIe 4 SSD club. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeremy, this might be TLC, not QLC? Let's see. Uh, hmm. Oh, no, maybe TLC not. Maybe drive. not. I'm seeing SLC cache. Okay. Tech Power Upper uh, reviewed the two terabyte model. It has RAM. It's not DRAMless. So it has DDR4 2666 on board. 640 gigs of the two terabytes are pseudo yeah. SLC cache. Okay. That's the big thing. Almost half the bloody drive is the, the, the pseudo SLC. Oh, it's TLC. So, it is TLC. Yeah, it is. Wow. Hey, TLC with important. SSC cache? That's like an Evo yeah. drive. Important it's, to note it here, did, did you see the pricing it. on that? $450, just to harken back to the conversation we had earlier about that two terabyte drive for, what was did you say, Josh? Two hundred and two seventy nine. Yeah, 279 Yeah, so here's, here's a, you know, same amount of storage, of course, PCIe 4.0. Yeah. With cache, I don't know if the other one has cache or not, but 450 and it's also got two gigs of RAM. Oh. So it, it, it actually wants to take a bit of a beating. And it did fairly well. I'm curious now. I'm going to pause here and look at the two terabyte. Because it has memory. It's not DRAM-less. And it has cache. But I think the cache is kind of a fluid thing. It's like a minimum and maximum thing. For Samsung... Yeah, you can uh, fire up their magician and play around with that. Okay, let's look at some specs here. It is TLC. So they're calling it 3-bit MLC. This is the Samsung 980 Pro. So it's TLC also. It has, in the 2 terabyte, it has 2 gigabytes of LPDDR4 memory. Oh, same, same. And then I don't remember exactly how the caching played out. I thought I had a chart. I think that was when the series launched. I must have done a news post on it. it had a chart that showed the breakdown. But similar. So it's kind of the same idea, but they're using a silicon motion controller with the new Kingston KC3000 drive. I wouldn't be surprised if performance is comparable, though. So we're talking roughly the same like cache rate. I don't know how many channels the controller has. It's a... F oh, look, it's, I thought it said silicon motion here. Uh, oh, no, they're talking about the old KC2500 and 2000. Yes, yeah, no, this is, even though their 4.0 stuff is is slow. Okay. It's it's yeah. essentially what E16, Fizon E16 type speeds. Yeah. So the first gen 4.0. So, yeah. Okay. This is Fizon uh, E18. E18, so yeah. Kind of the same 
Let's see. Which, which made this a little bit interesting because, I mean, when, literally when you're saying, well, it's got the uh, Faizani 18 and it's got that same uh, TLC that we know and love, every drive up. You know, well, yeah, it's the 170 the dual scroll up on that page. It's got that yeah. 176 uh, um, uh, layer SSD. Wait, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, there it new is. 176 it's layer micron stuff. Yeah. That stuff is so it's literally super the same fast. As it's like seventy five hundred, yeah. you know, uh, reads. It's 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 good stuff, Maynard. Yeah. They say, <laughs> but if the... you take a look at the uh, sustained writes, okay, I'll look at that page next. Sustained. Um, what is that under write intensive usage? Yeah, write intensive. Okay. So I mean, it still has follows the same pattern you would expect, mm-hmm. but. It doesn't do it until well after the 600 gig mark, which at okay. that point, what are you doing? <laughs> what, <laughs> what are you writing that library. doesn't have time to at least pause and refresh the cache? It's not bad that it falls down to almost two gigabytes. And that's the other second. thing. Yeah. That's the lowest that it will go. So Wow. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's very good. Let's see, SOC cache size. There's, there's the reason. It's huge. Yeah. It's monstrous. 640 gigs. Yeah. Sustained rights filling the entire disk. The only thing faster was only the 970 Pro. Pro 512. Oh, there you go. The smaller capacity. It looks like they yeah. have not tested the 980 Pro 512. Because that thing is fast. I'm seeing 980, 980 Pro 1 terabytes. but I'm No, strangely enough, it's not on yeah. there. The, the the 980 Pro 512 is great. I wondered why they sent that for review. And then I tested the 2 terabyte and it was slower. Across the board. Hmm. So another option out there. Another Fizon E18 option, but with fast TLC. And if you do actually tend to write a couple hundred gigs at a time, not a bad choice. Yeah, what are you doing, though? What are you doing? I don't know. I, I don't. I'm copying my game drives from one to another relentlessly okay What's samsung my focus? tvs samsung tvs you can brick them <laughs> you mean the brick remotely that's a feature oh this is bad yes now you thought that was you only could brick a tv when you were screwing around with the factory mode and trying to change settings that you shouldn't be changing or your wii yeah well that too never had one actually go through the screen but it did hit the frame got yeah. very lucky there so yeah what, tell me this about this came journey. out. I mean, this came out relatively innocently, and I, I totally understand why Samsung did this, because there was a huge raid uh, in South Africa, uh, in which a, literally a pretty much a factory was cleared out of brand new Samsung TVs, and so they announced that well, um, actually, you're not going to have to worry about this. That the thieves are not going to get away with their horrible behavior because we have the ability to remotely brick any of our TVs. If we detect that it comes on, because they're all, of course, they're all smart TVs. The second that it hits the the internet, we cannot just, you know, prevent it from hitting the internet. We can make this thing just, it don't work no more. It won't show a picture. It won't do a damn thing. Now, well, that does sound good at the very beginning that, you know, it's going to stop these robbers and their nefarious deeds and any benefit they can get from them. But it leads to the question of how secure is your TV block feature, Samsung? Uh, The the White Hat 2022, is some guy going to be going on about how he, this is the process he used to brick every single Samsung TV on the planet. This this is ridiculously scary. Uh, They do suggest that if, for whatever reason, yours innocently got bricked, you can reach out to us and we will unbrick it. I have a feeling that because if they're really and truly removing all uh, ability for this thing to function, they're not going to be able to un- unbrick it remotely because it will have been severed from the network. And so you're probably going to have to be shipping it in and, you know, having a new one shipped, which is just, you know, hor- horrifying because try to find a dumb TV nowadays. It, it is more or less impossible to do if you want a new TV. So the idea that, uh, you know, 
Samsung has the ability to completely and totally sever it irrevocably and with no idea how easily accessible that is to someone who knows what they're doing or that can manage to break into Samsung and get a hold of the uh, master controls. They can just pick and choose serial numbers and kick them off. This, this is not good. Let's break here for another podcast sponsor. Are you looking for additional resources to support your existing IT staff and cybersecurity, network optimizations, or even to manage your entire IT infrastructure? VPLS is a managed service provider with 20 years of industry-leading customer service. They can operate as an outsourced IT department with help desks, security, managed backup, or as an entire network and security operations center to bulk up your existing team. VPLS can help make information technology a competitive advantage for your business. They can do this by shifting the responsibility of managing managing IT needs from your business teams into the hands of their certified professionals. VPLS can handle the IT needs for both large and growing companies and have no trouble scaling to your business. Unlike other managed service providers, VPLS is truly a one-stop shop with their own data centers, backup and disaster recovery planning, cloud migration expertise, and managed help desk support. Whether you already have an IT team or are looking for experts to manage your entire infrastructure, VPLS has the skills and experience to bridge the gaps in the IT framework for your organization. Visit www.vpls.com slash goit to see all of their offers, including low monthly co-location rates for all new customers. That's www www.vpls.com slash go it seabury it's i i'm not even sure what this is is this a i like this back like plane it. board that you can plug a raspberry pi into is it a, a t- totally new pcb solution what is this jeremy it, it's it's sheer lunacy in a way is what it is. <laughs> uh, i agree That's great. so you take a raspberry pi 4 uh, and you plug this <laughs> into the Seabury, and you, you, it now all of a sudden has a plethora of PCIe interfaces because uh, the Pi does have the power to do it, but it doesn't have the space, obviously, to have everything. So this thing, uh, which is uh, partly as a compute module, uh, so there is actual processing going on on it but you get a 16 by or a physical 16 by slot which is only running one by four pci one mini slots and four m.2s that each have two pcie lanes and also a single lane pci m.2 so you can populate this thing like far beyond even what you can do on a generally find on a, a an a x86 motherboard it's it's if you're trying and plug everything in, of course. I mean, the, the A72 is going to slow down a little bit. There's there's a lot of addressing to do there, but if you just want the flexibility and to be able to swap things in and out, this thing is just absolutely insane. There is a problem. Oh, uh, they're probably completely out of stock and not <laughs> showing it anymore. Yeah. Uh, but this is this leads to the problem. It's four hundred thirty five dollars. And you've still got to pick up the pie and your stuff. Now, and if you're going to go with, say, an ITX motherboard and a, a relatively expensive Ryzen 5 or Core i3, you'd probably be at about 435 and have a little bit more functionality. Yeah. But I well, think... Well, I mean, if you bought that in an ITX, it'd probably run a bit over 435, right? Here's the thing yeah, that not much, this is a two hundred and fifty dollar board. You can't turn yeah. a mini ITX board into the basis of a mining rig like you can with this though. Isn't oh, that the no, real reason could... it has eleven PCIe uh, device support? Uh I mean it could probably do a good job of Chia. It does have a lot of storage on it. Hey, I'm not even sure apart from just the fact that they could do it as to what this would actually be useful for. It's, it's mm-hmm. just, holy crap, look at my Raspberry Pi. I can plug it in here and look what it can do. It is cool that but it has it, it is, it's pretty cool. on it. Yeah, 11 PCIe. It mini ITX. Yeah. It, it is very impressive. And then run Windows on ARM on it. <laughs> oh, of course. 
I think the uh, that major set of pins on the back is for all the GPIO pins. Plus, it's plugging into all the other ports on there, isn't it? At the same time. Oh yeah. Oh, it's, there's no peripherals left on that pie at that right, point. Right. Right. That's what I thought. Yeah. So, so wait, wait, wait. If you're every... not. Go ahead. If if so, Macintosh has got the Hackintosh. Microsoft is what hack your face. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Surface hack. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hack hackus. Face off. Sur- hack face. Circuitosh. Sur- no, no, it doesn't work. <laughs> no. <laughs> Microface. Circuit. Microface. Anyway. Yeah. Hack face. Pie face. The Microsoft fiasco. Oh, Has anybody anyway. watching or listening yeah. tried to buy yeah. DDR5 memory? You will know it's pain. The stuff is never in stock. If it is, it's alarmingly expensive. And to even get better performance than a really good DDR4 kit, which is a lot cheaper and easier to get, is you have to spend some money. Because the basic entry-level 4800 DDR5 with loose timings is not going to outperform very high performance DDR4 at this point. And DDR4, high frequency DDR4 traditionally, it's been really expensive. And if you've noticed even though DDR5 is not available, DDR4 is readily available and the prices have been tumbling. So, in the midst of all of this, this rambling preamble, if you've, you've probably rambling? seen this brand on Newegg, Neo Forza. They have this kit called the Fay, F A Y E. 16 gigabytes, it's not a ton, but it's 5,000 megatransfers per second DDR4. So now you're up into that DDR5 territory. You're beyond it a little bit. So, and the timings are really good. At this point, you're, you're talking CL19, 5,000. So that's half of the latency of DDR5 at the same... Well, okay, it's only going to be dual channel. It won't be quad channel. You won't have the same bandwidth. Well, I mean, DDR5 don't like quad channel neither. No. Okay. Straight from the horse's mouth. So, uh, what's interesting about this is I checked it out on Newegg, and you can actually buy it. That's the thing. Like, it's, it's in stock, and the price is not insane the price is not great for only 16 gigs but if you don't need more than 16 gigabytes and if you just, let's face it if you're just gaming then you don't uh then uh well, unless you're playing flight sim i guess there's probably a couple games out there that'll prove me wrong but it's 179.99 on am on uh new egg so that's expensive but it's it's the fastest speed DDR4 that I've seen on Newegg, and it's 180 bucks. CL19. Not horrible. I wonder what chips are in these things. The Tynix or or what? I mean, it's it's very high voltage, though. I have a feeling it would be tough to find a board that would reliably run this at CL19 at 1.6 volts. It has a fallback. That's toasty. It has a fallback yeah. second option, XMP, which is a DDR4-3600. It'd be sad if you paid 179 for this and could only get it to boot in the second XMP profile. Yeah, well, I mean, Brett, don't pick this up for your Ryzen. No, <laughs> yeah. probably yeah. not going to work <laughs> unless, out. I, unless you can get I that F-pop some, up, up to 2500. That would be great. I have some 36... <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. if you look at the DDR4-3600 with reasonably good timings on this, you can see where it falls yeah. in relation. Oh, go ahead, Jeremy. Yeah, no, because, I mean, there, there's the thing. Like, and they even do DDR5-6000. Yeah. Right, so they, they, they took the same uh, set of, uh, I think it was uh, Corsair that they used. Uh, but uh, the, so they clocked it to various things. They also found a different carrot, which was DDR5, but the best timings I've ever seen, and put it up against just, you know, current DDR4. And I mean, yeah, I there is 
nothing good to say about DDR5 in this for the most part. Now, this chart and all the ones below this, remember, they're scaled to kind of like the best available. So you see DDR5 6000, there's the 100% mark. If you, if you look for the DDR4 3600, you'll see that it's 95.9% for a dramatically cheaper cost. Yeah. And you see this sort of this sort of um, um, relationship carry through all the charts. So if you scroll down and kind of take a look and see where that DDR4 3600 falls on the various charts, you'll see that that DDR5 really isn't buying you a whole heck of a lot at least in the tests that they've done no. here. There are one or two tests where they actually do squeak out a little bit of a win, but when you look at the price for performance, it's yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, we, Cinebench was one of the ones that kind of liked it, but yeah. not enough to justify it. Have we ever seen this kind of jump in latency from one gen to the next in the DDR Josh era? Would know. Josh would know. <laughs> say the that frequency again. jump is also huge, though. Okay, but have we ever seen this big of a jump then in frequency and latency? Because DDR to DDR2, the latency increase was not very high. And initially, the no, frequency, the frequency wasn't, wasn't either. They were higher. pretty much the same. The frequency was the same, but the uh, but yeah. the 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 latency doubled. It went from CAS2 to. Did it really go to cast four? Or was five it like or six? Five? It was like Shit. Oh, five damn. or six, yeah. I thought. Because yeah, I, I know yeah, in the uh, old PC 100, 133 era, we were dealing with like a really high end Mushkin kit might have cast one, and a lot of kits mm -hmm. would have cast two or two point five. I think two point five was pretty much standard for your DDR kits, your initial DDR kits, and then DDR two was higher. I think you're right. That's when you got into the, like the four and five range. But to go from, we have kits now with, you know, cast 16. Is yeah, DDR2-800, the good stuff, had cast latency 6. Okay. So going okay, from yeah. 2 at the, you know, at the, the fast stuff to 6 was, it was a, there was a lot of people unhappy about that with uh, DDR2. And DDR3. But DDR2, when it first came out, it was what, uh, PC, T, D, D, what, a 6, 33 was the no 533 was yeah, the lowest 533 no i think it was like 400 was the lowest but 533 oh, well, was the the first decent you know speed that you could yeah. get and ddr3 you could get cast 8 ddr3 kits when that came yeah. out so yeah and then we went up to cast it doubled i guess i guess maybe 3 to 4 is where it happened cuz then 4 comes out and it's like cast 16 and up for the most yep. part. Okay. So I mean, it boils pretty... down to my, now might be the, maybe you're not getting the, all the performance that the dollars, you know, might imply that you're getting for investing in all the latest with DDR5. You're going to do pretty well with a DDR4 kit, even, even with the latest mm -hmm. Alder Lake. No, and that's probably why they put, chose to put out uh, motherboards with both. Yeah. You can have your nice mature product or you can have the shiny new stuff that yeah is literally bleeding it yeah when you can get it's 32 gigs you. for 100 bucks yeah in ddr4 at reasonable yeah. timings and, and and speeds yeah can you get 3600 with low timings at 100 bucks 32 32 no gig? no that... you're looking at 150 oh, no. for that yeah yeah but still it's way way under what ddr5 is going to cost on top of yes. availability issues with ddr5 yeah yeah. So there you go. I mean, right now, there you if you're go. really looking to build. If you, if you insist upon building your Alder Lake uh, rig, then you know maybe maybe go this way. I mean, part. the kind of people who build Alder Lake rigs with DDR5 right now, they don't even know how to do basic math. Oh, obviously. so the money Look at our Discord matter. community. Oh, something like I I cannot even find the last post by this individual, but it's like <laughs> thirty ninety plus twelve nine hundred k. Equals something, something, something. Mm -hmm. Are you saying our Discord community is filled with people who can't add? No, saying? it's filled with one person who had to be on the absolute <laughs> bleeding edge and then complained endlessly for weeks while they waited for 
any DDR5 to come in and couldn't get the motherboard they wanted. Like, uh, well, it's just what you get when you have to have like the absolute the latest. latest and greatest. And it's terrible. Like the price performance with DDR5 is obviously horrendous right now. At the moment, yes. It'll change. It'll get better. Okay. Let's pause mm. one final time to hear from a podcast sponsor this week. If you've ever felt the need to make your home feel safer, there's no better time than now. This week, our friends at Simply Safe are giving PC Per listeners early access to all their holiday deals at 40% off for award winning home security. With Simply Safe, they have the full package of sensors, indoor and outdoor cameras backed up by around the clock monitoring with trained professionals that'll send help the instant you could need it. This year, customize a system for your home and get the best home security system of 2021 Simply Safe. You can do this all online, of course, and even get customized recommendations. These are Simply Safe's biggest discounts of the year. You can get a complete home security system starting at just over $100. There's no long-term commitments or contracts. It's just really easy to start feeling a bit more peace of mind. So take advantage of Simply Safe's holiday deals and get 40% off your new home security system by visiting simplysafe.com/pcper. Again, that's simplysafe.com/pcper for 40% off your entire system. We're back for everyone's favorite segment. Picks of the week. And Josh, you start us off. Okay, so this is the lowest price that I've seen yet for these. It's the Thrustmaster. Uh, what, TCA? What's what's the exact? Uh, TCA Officer Pack Ooh. Airbus Edition. 189 bucks for these. That's that's a smoking deal. I've, I'd only seen these for like 250 and above. So apparently uh, these are now in, in nice stock and, uh, you know, it's a good solid joystick and base. But those those throttles, man, if you ever play MSFS 2020, you know how good having actual throttles is. So I'm, I'm quite looking forward to, uh, to checking these out. And uh, yeah, and they look nice, too. Just got to have enough space on your desktop. Hull effect on the joystick? Probably. I uh, hope so. Just to keep the uh, joystick uh, conversation going for a second, we talked a little bit about um, joysticks and stuff last week, and there was a comment on last week's YouTube video two weeks regarding... Ago. Yeah. Oh, sorry, two weeks ago. No, sorry. Jo- well, no, Brett gone, in his by home the way. himself uh, over the holiday. Ah, over he the talked about table. joysticks, yeah. but it was not... The way you was anyway. He was, he, well, here he was. He was carving the turkey. He pulled off one of the private moment. The, the drumsticks. He's like, you know what? Speaking of <laughs> speaking of drumsticks, joysticks, and the, the turkey's getting cold. Were you turkey ain't gonna stuff itself? Yeah, because that actually. Happened. Oh, all right. That's all I want to say. There was a comment which was along the lines of, "Hey, because I mentioned Elite Dangerous and and Space Flight Sims, you know, sort of similar to what you know you're talking about, but a little bit more extraterrestrial." Uh, that the I uh, it was the Logitech X56, I think, was recommended as the best available median-priced uh, system for getting a HOTAS control system. And I wondered what everybody else thought about that because it's not cheap. It's still like $250, $300 plus dollars, as opposed to getting into some of the, yeah, the Logitech uh, X56. There's a renewed one for $249, but the, but the new price is $400. Yeah. It's still damn pricey. I just wondered if that's kind of like the go-to for what I hesitate to call the mid-priced approach to uh, getting a no, that is mid-priced flight now. stick. Oh my god! Although that's a decent price on that side tech there, the X52. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which one? The X52. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I it's not know. amazing, but for look at how many bucks. stars. Mm. That's for the renewed. Let's see, a new one's only one fifty. Oh yeah. Get a brand new 150? one. Money bad. Yeah, okay. Money no, bad. get a new brand there, new one for one fifty. Is there a big quality diff between the X fifty two and X fifty six? You know, I don't know enough about these, and I really there want is. a set of good controls before I get into flight sims. Uh, Look at the buttons on the uh, on this one, and the yeah. this on um, this toggle switches as well. So and then flip yeah, up to the, the other X52. one. Yeah, this is the X fifty two. So let's take a look. But at the honestly, X56. I think it's mostly shell. The shell is much more attractive. The interior i don't think is that much different now you see i think you get you get split throttles with this one you get more hats yep. um 
Yeah, you get you get two hats. I don't there, know about that and, side hat though. Uh, yeah. Definitely more switching. Uh, there seems to be like double the amount of yeah. switching, um, including some attenuators there on the um, on the throttle. Well, plate. you get nice metal f- toggle switches. You don't have the the cheaper plastic flips. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems four hundred dollars is a lot, and a lot of people complain about this. Josh, you have one of these or or not? No, I do not. Yeah. No, I've got an old uh, SciTech uh, ST two ninety Pro that I use as my uh, e brake. Anybody? I mean, these 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 things work. I would pull it out, but it seems stuck on something. <laughs> this thing, on the other hand, don't work so well anymore. Jeremy, I have. Apparently, I need to tear it apart and clean it up. Uh, and I don't want to. That's an old one, Josh. Oh, yeah, nice. Um, but uh, it was super uh, solid. It's back. It still still works nice. Um, and then I've got the uh, Microsoft uh, Force Feedback Sidewinder too. And that thing is a tank. And I've I've showed that off before. Yeah. Microsoft um, has made died. some legendary hardware in the past. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. My favorite thing about that force feedback one well, was that noise it makes when you first brought up the computer. Scared the hell out of yeah, myself more than a few times. I'd be interested in the consensus on how the how the X fifty six actually fares. I've read some horror stories and I've read a bunch of people who are saying, Yeah, the latest version is fine before I drop four hundred dollars on something yeah, like that. That's yeah. the thing. You know, this 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 TCA one for one eighty Nine, I mean that's that's a smoking deal for a pretty yeah. solid unit. So, and it's got the spread. It's got the two throttles, all kinds of extra toggles and whatnot. So, something to look into if you're if you're into it. I'll probably talk about it more next week once I get it in. Cool, Jeremy, you're up. I am indeed. This is an odd one. Oh, and if you're missing your mod check on your bingo card here, here it comes. Uh, Dine Dolod. This is for the new Skyrim, uh, because, I'm, of course, I've been drawn back into Skyrim. I, well, in my defense, this is only the second time I've ever played it. Uh, but it is uh, an impressive mod. You have, of course, a lot of dependencies, which you have to do to get onto it. But once you do... Uh, you have to run a separate mod, which you will. F- I'm not going to tell because if you're going to play with this, you're going to need to play with it and figure it out. It essentially takes uh, a whole bunch of your texture downloads and will process it. And on my 5800X, or yeah, it took about 22 minutes to chug through. At what point? At all cores, pegged at 100. percent I'm going to actually email the mod. Uh, uh, designer to say, you know, what exactly is going on here? Because this might be a damn good benchmark for CPUs. It doesn't make anything close to UHD. It doesn't improve the HD textures of the piece of wood that you're looking at. What it does is replace all of the palettes in the background. So that as you're walking through Skyrim, you've got all of your HD mods and your water looks brilliant, but you look up and the mountains far away just look like utter garbage. This is two and 4K palette backgrounds for Skyrim. So as you're looking out, the entirety of Skyrim is still rendering trees. It's still rendering a little bit of clouds. It still doesn't have the janky zero bit textures for a a mountain really far away. It doesn't sound like it's worth the amount of effort that it puts into, but it really, really does change the experience from looking at your feet and looking at gorgeous parallax peb- high definition pebbles and looking up and seeing clown vomit uh, as a mountain. It's, it's actually still HD as you're looking out. And I've cranked the view distance up as far as it goes. And, you know, it, it's still a 10 year old game. A modern GPU don't care. It will still render it. If you want to cheat and you unlock your camera from your character, you can actually tool around and see just how far out the grass is still drawn. It, it's going to take you a bit to get set up, but it is actually one of the more impressive ones I've run into. Okay, here's a good example. Here's a vanilla scene. And this, this 
looks its age. Yeah. But let's move up to. Whoa. Is this the same? Oh, yeah. Yes. They Suddenly. just didn't bother drawing the wall that far away. <laughs> Literally, it's it's far off in the distance. The wall is too much work. We're not going to draw it. And here's high. Let's look at high versus. Uh, uh, bit of a. Not yeah, much. Just, just uh, a little oh, bit of wow. difference here. Just, wow. You know, a couple of things. <laughs> so it seems right. strange that. No, spending all this time to make stuff look better far away in Skyrim. No, it, I shit you not. It actually does work pretty well. Okay, Brett, you're up. And I see that yeah, you've I was returned at, to your roots. Yeah, I went back to OWC for this one. But everybody should understand that that's just what happens occasionally with me. Hmm, uh, hmm, I was looking hmm. around for a, a reasonable deal. There's so many out there. So I tried to to scour the corners and try and find something that maybe not everybody already knew about. I mean, everybody's probably getting the new egg ad or... You know, looking at Amazon for their Black Black Friday, you know, Cyber Monday type deals. So I went to OWC and I looked, hey, what's a pretty good deal on OWC? So I found these Audio Technica headphones with built in mic, Bluetooth, rechargeable, $18.96 for Audio Technica S200BTs on ear. They're white. The There's a black version on the site as well. I think it's uh, $5 or so more. But the white ones were the really stonking deal here uh, with, like I said, built in mic and everything Bluetooth. Now, you're not listening to these or using these for audio quality listening, but they do kind of make a, uh, a nice set of maybe a loner headset in the house to say, hey, let's sit down and play some land game or something. Or if you're just going to game with them, you know, it's probably pretty reasonable for that for $18.96 full on Audio Technica headphones yeah pretty good deal just just bluetooth though right there's no additional like, wired does not functionality appear to be, or anything okay it does not appear and you know the controls are obviously there as you can see by this picture yeah so full controls volume control you know on off you know whatever usb charging you know built-in battery with mic pretty good deal for less than 20 dollars and with that We've reached the end of another show. We're back after a week off. We've been doing this for, I don't know, about an hour and a half. It's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, considering not much is going on other than Qualcomm right now. Yeah. Yep. And sales. Mm -hmm. And no releases, unlike last year at this time, which we yeah. had Intel, uh, yeah, AMD, the new Intel, more AMD, NVIDIA. You were a little busy, if I remember correctly, from like September through the new year. Yeah, straight through CES. Well, with CES, it didn't happen. It's like childbirth. You block this stuff out, and it's the only way you could ever <laughs> repeat it. <laughs> Do it again. That's fair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for listening and or watching or both, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Good night. <laughs>